Today is the first day of daylight savings time. And now it's raining. It's super, super cold. I think this is the first cold day that we've had since fall started. And everyone is feeling it. The ducks are kind of going crazy. You know, right now, it would have been an hour later, a couple days ago. So the ducks are going crazy. The goats are ready to be milked. And everything is throwing off my routine. I typically go drop off the kids and then I have some time to get things going. I need time, I have time to change, you know, put some more clothes, get the milking stuff ready. But not right now. Um, I've been running, running, running since I drop off the kids. And since it's cold, I don't know, it's taking me some extra time. And as you can see, they're more than ready. <laughs> this is how I've been separating. So Clara is staying with the twins. That's Gaia, the one with a smaller hole. And you should breathe. Her name is Briere. But we call her Brie Brie because she's the sweetest. And then I have Annabelle and Mocha on the other side. So this gives me plenty of time to clean and get things ready. And it's a system that right now works. What are you doing to your sister? Since it's been raining, I've been putting their bag of hay on top of the milking sanction, which is not, you know, the greatest idea ever. But all the waste ends up there and doesn't really, they don't pee or poop there. So what I've been doing is collecting that in one bucket. And since they're like smaller pieces, I don't put them back in the bag, but I've been feeding it to the boys. And the boys will eat every single piece of this. So I feel like I'm not wasting that much. I was hanging the bag here and all this was being wasted. So I figured I'm gonna try this, which is not a perfect situation, but still it's better than not doing anything about it. And that way I don't even have to go through new hay. The boys will eat everything that the girls wasted and it's small enough that it won't go good enough on the bag. I feel like this daylight savings thing is never good for anybody. But I never had, but I never had farm animals, so I didn't know how it was going to affect them. But since they are ruled by light and not so much the time, I guess they don't care about the time but they care about how early it is or how light how much light there's outside now, I'm not too fancy with the milking situation right now because we plan to do the milking station outside but for now this is gonna work I keep the grain here here the grain and they get excited in this way I can refill as needed they are not producing as much as they were I assume it's the cold weather so lesson learned about us milking and stuff during the winter uh, maybe you know it's, it'd be a better idea to have them have their babies you know February March and then I can milk them throughout the summer and that way I can get more milk for the feed that I'm gonna give them hi Clara Clara right here she is going to have her babies around Valentine's Day she is looking a little bit more chunky even though that she's only what two months so, hi girls, I know. I'm gonna hurry up, okay? So you can be with your mama. So this is basically it. 
I have a not very fancy way of closing the sand. I just put uh, some twine there. I roll it like this. And then I'm careful when I take it off. Is this the perfect solution? Yeah, not really, but it works. So I just go like this, open it, and then when they come back, I'll just close it with that. And I'll show you a little bit. I'm mostly uh, hand milking because it gets done faster. And I don't know for how long I'm gonna keep them in milk because to be honest, it's more about how much feed I'm giving them in order to get milk back. But if I'm not getting enough milk, after probably the end of November, I'm gonna start to dry everyone off. I'm gonna store the milk that I have and try to dry them off. In that way, I can still have some milk throughout the winter because it's not like we're you know, making cheeses. It's mostly for drinking, so I can do that. I was doing all kinds of things with the milk when they were when they were in a higher production, but I think the cold weather or the slowly changing season it's been messing with the production. So um, I'll see by the end of November how we are and how much milk I'm getting. Oh, yes, it is your turn. And I'm gonna start milking. I'm gonna try to show you some stuff. But to be honest, the corner is pretty dark, so I don't know how much you'll be able to see. Come on, Annie. Come on, girlfriend. And again, it's not about the time that it takes me to milk them or more that has to do with the amount of milk that they're giving me according to the feed that I'm giving them. And in case you didn't know, I'm pretty sure that if you have a farm, you do know that things have been very expensive as far as feed goes. Hay is super expensive. And um, so, just buying hay, it's a... Uh, even by the ton, it's a lot of money compared to what it was, you know, a few months back. And so if then we add the cost of grain, you know, I just have to be smart enough to not lose money in order to keep them in milk. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, I have some friends that have bigger goats and they get a gallon a half and a half per day but honestly I've tried that milk and I didn't like it that much I feel like Nigerian dwarf milk is way better tasting Mocha is doing so much better as far as not holding back her milk, but she decided that she knows how to sit now. So it's one good news and then some bad news because <laughs> she didn't used to sit. She would uh, fold her front legs, but she wouldn't. And She wouldn't sit on her. <laughs> and she is a little brat as far as milking her. She really is. Um, I mean, it's not terrible as far as what I've been seeing as first fresheners, but she's a little brat. The only legs, the only leg that she moves is this right one that I'm holding. So she's not terrible. <laughs> But I wish that she stay still so I could do both teeth at the same time. She, as you can see, she is milking amazing. 
The only problem I have is by doing this, I get cramps in my hands. Um, because I have to hold her leg, I had to find the most uncomfortable positions ever to try to milk her. And the less I move, the less that she moves. But like on this, I want to do it with my right hand. Let's see. If I'm not holding on to her leg, she'll start kicking. And the other thing is with Mocha, she's a fast eater. And I'm trying to do just one entire container. That's it. That's all I want to give them for the milk. So I can do Annabelle very easily with just one container. But Mocha, since she moves so much and I have to grab her leg and She's a little pain in the rear, and because of that, I cramp my hands more because typically she just doesn't want me to move. When I found a position where I can milk her, I have to milk her until she is empty on that side. But see, now I'm cramping because her udder is super full too. So I wish I could do it with both hands and sometimes she lets me do it with both hands but see she's done she's almost done with her entire bowl and as soon as I let go she so it's a balancing act as far as how much feed I give them sometimes what I do is I grab a bottle I'll do it like this so even if she tries to put her foot in the pail see now she is over she is done with her feed she does have a little bit left and I have animals Let's see, she's starting to sit. I don't let her sit. I push her up and even if the milk gets stepped on or whatever, I'll give it to the dogs. But she is not winning this bottle. She is also very stubborn. And I was talking to somebody who owned gold for a really long time and she was telling me this sometimes it's just a struggle of who is boss sometimes she's just trying to win the battle every morning so until you show that you're stronger than her that you love her so be patient but you love her and everything but you want her to listen to you and she needs to do what you tell her until she learns who's boss, then you're gonna have to struggle with her for a little bit. And then she will stop. And it's true, she used to be a little bit worse than she is right now when hand milking. I mean, she never liked hand milking. She'd rather have me do the machine. The machine, the machine does it very slowly. And I just don't have the patience. <laughs> and she's holding back now because she has two girls that are ready to nurse. But before, she was holding the entire thing. Now she's like holding back like enough for her girls. And I still don't want her to win. So I will milk her until I can. And then when I am done, I tell her. We're done. Now she is licking the bowl. 
and she's looking around, finding little pieces of grain. But if I'd given her an entire bowl of grain, she would have eaten it and she'd still be giving me a hard time. It's just by the time that she's full, she still wants to eat, but she's full, so she's still be a pain in the neck. getting up. We're not sitting. We're not sitting. Good girl. Good girl. And she knows. And I'm both here smelling everything. Now she threw a fist, so I don't want to stop milking her just because she threw a fist. So I'll milk her a little bit more. I can be the one to say, okay, that's enough. We don't need any more milk. <laughs> All right, we're done. Good job, Mocha. You did good, Mama. This is what I'm talking about. That's how much milk I'm getting from both of them. Now, I could milk more Mocha. She still has milk, but she still has baby babies on her. So I'm sure that if the production for me has lowered, I'm sure that the production for the girls has lowered too. She has a very tight udder, she has a very full udder, but you can tell that she's not. I was typically getting a full mason jar and half of a small one. And even if I would be able to get this much, like a full, what is it, a form? Um, then I'd be okay, you know, just keep milking them. But for this much, I don't know if a couple of bowls of grain is worth it. When they were in a higher production, they were getting a bowl and a half of grain, but the production was much higher. I knew this was going to happen, I knew that I was going to have to milk them throughout the winter and that when it gets cold their production goes down. So I just need to make a decision, is it worth it? Okay, before I let them uh, out, I'm going to go fill the bag. And again, this is not the ideal situation, but it is the best that we can do in order not to waste so much. Come on. Oh, your mommy. You're like, um, well, I came for the grain, but thanks. This stall's open inward, which is great when you don't want goats to escape or break things out. But it's a pain when we are doing the deep litter system. open them because you don't want a, any waste exposed especially when they're laying around all day here because of the rain and cold weather before I go I'd like to check on their water open this door so if they feel like somebody's bullying somebody they have a place to go I feel like little Bribri is being bullied a bit by the other goats. There she is. That's Lil Burberry. Um, I feel like she's being bullied a little bit more. She's been 
acting differently recently. She's not separating herself or she's not, you know, not eating or drinking or anything like that. So I think it's more behavior, uh, her deal. So I don't know. She's still, you know, following her mom. She's the one kind of chasing Mocha around so she can get the most milk. But I don't know. I feel like she is being picked on or something it's up in between them so i like to leave some extra spaces that if they feel like they want to be alone they can be alone or they can go together the twins can go together let me show you this little brie brie she found her mom she like wagging her tail And as you can see, she's very persistent. Mocha is hiding and she's kind of sitting on um, her udder, so they leave her alone. She wants to eat. Hey, look, she's like, hey, listen, I am sitting, okay? Are you done? I mean, she'll feed them. It's just that she's kind of over it. Are you over it, Mama? Oh, goodness gracious. Hi, Gaia. You're just so pretty, Mama. You're just this girl. She is so strong and so pretty. Gaia is um, she was the first one born, so she's always been bigger. But Bree Bree, she's catching up, and she has a lot of winter hair. Hi, Bree Bree. I say that she looks like an old lady because she's always looking with those tired eyes. <laughs> Look at her. He's so cute though. Anyways, that's why I try to take the time to do this in the morning, leave everything open for them, even though most of the time they won't stay here. They typically stay in the alley over there. Now, as if you have goats and if you live in a humid weather, you probably know this, but it's kind of hard to keep their minerals clean and dry. So I try not to put too much, like this is whatever was left and I leave it there. There's that, yeah. Because I do want them to have minerals available, but I can't do more than a handful per day. So I do refill this every day. You know, there's not much the next morning. So I have baking soda. I have minerals, like over there, there's minerals and baking soda, some straw inside. They have water. So they are set. Hi, Gaia. Gaia is very curious. And she's very nosy. <laughs> she's always on top of me. She's like, what are you doing? Huh? 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 I always say that she behaves like a two-year-old. A human two-year-old. Huh, mama? Mama, you oh, want your big belly. This is my big belly. I get beautiful big belly you have. You have a big belly. I'm gonna take this to the boys, and they're gladly gonna eat it. Now, one of the things that is crazy around here is wind. So I always have this here. I'm sure there's a more efficient way, but. That's what I've been doing. So when it gets windy, they don't get blocked. Because it happened before, like a couple of girls would get inside and then lock themselves in. Some smarty ones will push it open, but the ones outside will cry. Let's do the boys. We're trying to grow some grass here. My husband built the stairs for me. Or stumps, I should say. Because this clay, it's slippery. And sometimes it's not cold or anything, but if it's wet, it's, it's super slippery. The ducks are over this daylight thing. We got the latch for here. I haven't put it on yet. In this pan, everything, it's been handmade. This was the back of a lazy boy, well, the reclining part of a lazy boy that we got rid of. 
These are some pipes we got for free. This is some fence recycled from the girls. Wood that we repurpose. Our own trees. And um, this boy's pen is a muddy mess. They're here in the woods. So they are a lot more protected than if they were over there in the open. But still. Oh, they have no water. Hi, my boys. I have to lock them in there for now. They keep each other warm. <laughs> now they're over it, but... But I have to do that because we haven't finished the door here and there's a bunch of predators here at night. Uh, it's not if they come, it's when they come and they come every night. So I can lock them in, it gives me a peace of mind until we get to the door. There's a lot of things that need to happen around that take priority, so we'll go through them as we can. And as uh, we have the free time to do it. So I get them a little bit of alfalfa pellets, and this system, by them being locked, it gives me extra time to put things so they can eat and they won't be on top of me. Every night they get a little bit of alfalfa pellets enough so they go in their house over there. And then they get water. But see, I put the food there and then they go straight to it. Now I don't close this because to be honest, they love this dog kennel. This is where I feed them at night. So I'm gonna bring some clean straw, which I have to do every night, so they are nice and dry. But even when it starts raining, they have this entire area, covered area, to be. And they just to go inside the kennel. And they snuggle, the three of them. Rocky, that is a yellow mess. Duke, a little cast ass. Now, one of the things I've noticed since the colder weather set in is that they are more hungry, the boys are. So by giving them that little alfalfa, it fills them up in the morning, it fills them up at night, and they're not as loud. If I don't feed them that, and I put only hay, they will scream. I have to put that there. That's the ducks, or one of them was getting out. <laughs> Double layer of protection for the ducks. And ducks, ducks. I will refill all the waters around so they have plenty of water. I've only been feeding them in the morning because in winter time the good things about dogs is that if you keep them in mulch like we are in some areas it's pretty bare but <laughs> it's about six inches if not more of straw here and uh, the good thing about bugs is that if you keep them in mulch they have access to a lot more bugs so they're happy to eat in the morning and excited as you can see but they can get their own food the rest of the day and I'll show you like there's little holes all those holes are the dogs over there you can see all those holes there see them here all this is wonderful places for bugs and the dogs will actually get most of their food from that and then in the morning they have their pellets 
to make sure that they have enough niacin, which is what keeps them walking. They have very weak uh, legs. So if you don't give them the food with niacin, they will start getting weak. And look, I forgot the feed door open. So the girls are helping themselves. Now I have to tell you, Clara is the queen of getting where she's not supposed to. Uh, she knows her stuff. <laughs> Look, everyone else is inside eating and she's having the time of her life inside the hay storage or the small one that we have there for them for easy access. And I'm gonna try to get them out before the other ones realize. You two, get out. Out. because have you ever tried to wrestle with five goats I have and I always lose you stinker Clara teaching everyone the bad ways of life you're naughty <laughs> she was kind of thin for my liking um, I did a lot of research about how her, uh, how she's supposed to look if she was underweight, and I don't know. I felt like she was, but you can see now she's getting a little chunky chunk. Don't be jealous. You're a little chunky chunk girl too. You're not. You never are chunky. Annabelle, no matter how much. She tries, she can never be chunky. Even though she fights with everyone for food. And she was looking for minerals and water. Bless you, mama. But as long as they have hay over there, I don't have to give them a lot more than that. When they're not in milk, I still give them a little bit of alfalfa because I feel like they need the extra protein. I haven't seen her in heat since September the 20th, so I assume that she is pregnant, but I keep wanting to feel for babies, and I can't. Okay, it should be, what, two months around Thanksgiving? I'm not so letting thanks for hanging out with, uh, with us today I'm gonna go get things ready I've been working on soap I have been working on some gift baskets for Christmas and a lot of things that I've been using the extra milk that I was freezing while they were in higher production so lots to do but thank you so much for stopping by today if you're new please remember to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys next time you need something Clara you know, I have a life out of my goatee life. You can come with me, I'm sorry. Even if when it's raining, she'll try to come with me. She's pretty sneaky, so I have to make sure that it's locked. I'm a little stinker. I'm a little stinker. Mm-hmm. Naughty. Naughty Clara.